with Clarissa giving us an introduction, right? I mean, if you want to briefly share your name, your major and program, which I kind of already stepped on that part. <laughs> I, I, I told the office, but I didn't tell the role. And yeah, so anything you want to share with, with the audience? Hi, everyone. Oh, it's fun. Um, my name is Clarissa Mae Columbus. I use she, they pronouns. I work in the Office of Student Involvement, so downstairs across from Jamba Juice. I'm the Student Engagement Coordinator for Recognized Student Organizations, um, and I'm an SJC alum. So I graduated in December 2016 from the College of Education and Child and Adolescent Development with a prep for teaching. Um, I actually came to SJC as a transfer student, so I went to community college first and then transferred in. Um, yeah, and I was involved as a student, um, utilized my resources, and it's kind of interesting and kind of funny to be back here full circle. Thank you, thanks. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just get started, yeah. and then as people join us, we'll open the conversation to you and other individuals. Um, I know, you know, things come up. So I know I know that we have um, Kat is on her way was what Anita said. So we'll just we'll just get get going here. And then and then I'll let you off the hook for the later questions as I have more people to talk to. Okay, cool. well, you'll, you'll get your effort in early. <laughs> All right. So you were came through the child and adolescent development program. So why did you choose that major? Um, and and were there any on campus resources or clubs that helped you succeed in that choice of study? Um, so when I was in community college, I started community college as a kinesiology major. And then I wanted to go into pre nursing. And then I realized I wasn't very I wasn't the best when it came to like anatomy and physiology and chemistry. And so um, I ironically enough took an ethnic studies class that the requirement was to do community service. And so I was in, um, I was working, I was doing volunteering work at um, a preschool on campus and they had us um, work with this, the children. And I'll never forget, like you'd come in on a Monday and you start like the new unit or activity. And it was just interesting to see like how over the week, like how much is how much a student can learn. And so that made me want to change my major into education. And so um, that's what made me want to go to go into San Jose State was historically SJSU was um, started was founded as a teacher school. And so I knew college of education was pretty solid. Um, the resources that helped me, I know for sure was um, college education. They didn't, they had really strong advisors and our department chair was really hands-on in getting us involved with um, student teaching in the community. So I remember I was actually doing my student teaching at Horace Mann, which is across the street in a kindergarten classroom. And then I worked as a student assistant or an, a teacher's aide at the Child Development Center. So um, resources like that. I was also in Child and Adolescent Development Club because at the time we had like a small graduation ceremony. So, yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to back up. <laughs> Hi. I'm going to welcome Kat Estrada, who is, um, uh, well, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and share your name, your major, your program while you were here at San Jose State, and then your current role with the city. It, it doesn't sound like it. It does not sound like it. I can project, but... Check one. There we go. There it is. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am Kat Estrada. I am the Employee Services Manager or HR Manager for the City of San Jose Environmental Services Department. So responsible for all of my department's hiring, training, uh, any type of classification work or any personnel issues come through my team. Uh, I learned a lot of those skills as part of my MPA program here at San Jose State. I don't know what else you want to talk, for no, to talk about. Fine, that that's fine. But uh, yeah, MPA 11, uh, definitely recommend that program for anybody who would like to gain some more of those public sector skills and those uh, those practical, how do we do things in local government? So learn that all here at SJSU. 
All right, so I'll give you another prompt that, that Clarissa May was just answering for us. So why did you choose your, um, your program here at San Jose State? And were there any on-campus resources or clubs that helped you succeed within your choice of study? So I chose the program here just because I knew I wanted to do something in public service. And I had a background of a bachelor's degree in political science and was like, wow, cool. I know how to do a game theoretical analysis of the US Congress. I don't know how to operationalize that into public service. So really just uh, thinking through where am I gonna get that practical skill set? And San Jose State had a really uh, strong offering for that. So that was really what drew me to it. In terms of on-campus resources, the SJSU MPA Student Association was really strong at that time. I hope it still is, but just really great for networking, meeting other people who are local government practitioners and really building up that, uh, you know, that foundation of here are people who are experts in this community. So I think that was really what I took from it. Thank you. All right, so. And as you can see, I just kind of bolted over here from City Hall. So I'm just gonna be <laughs> taking a, Taking a breather for a second. Take a breath. Yes, please. Sorry to have you no jump worries. right in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Clarissa May. What skills did you build in a leadership role, either formally or informally, that you have brought into your professional role? And as examples, you know, maybe a project leader or um, an event coordinator, or even just in general, like it doesn't have to have a title. We've talked about that all morning. So, um, so when I was a student, um, I was involved. I was an orientation leader for two years. I was an RA for two years. Um, but also like when it came to like just being involved like in clubs and whatnot, like I wasn't the, I wasn't, you know, like a president. I wasn't, I didn't have an off like a title. And um, I think one of the things that I had learned as a student leader and just kind of like being in that environment at the time was that it was okay it's okay to to not you know like leadership isn't all about the title and I think leadership sometimes is just about following right like you can't be a leader unless you have fault like I know it sounds weird like you can't be a leader unless you have followers and so sometimes like when you are trying to lead and someone is following you like it gives you that sense of encouragement I think we're all looking for that validation and so I think that was one thing I took with me as a student into my professional role is that it's okay to to trust your team and to like lean into others to to lead essentially um but I think I think one of the things as a student that like I take with me now professionally and it sounds so silly but like I'm very like the way my mind operates and the way that I think is very like heavy on the admin like I it, I'm just very like oh I need to like it's a lot of like just that balance and time management was something that I learned to take with me because um if you're getting involved in a ton of different things like at the root of it like you come to like I know I came to SJSU because I wanted to get a degree. And so I was like, well, if I'm going to school and I'm getting involved, some of these things require a GPA requirement. And I knew that if I wanted to stay involved in these things, like I had to keep my grades up and being able to do that. Like it was so important to have time management, writing things on my calendar, making sure like I had, I never missed a deadline because I didn't want to be that that person. So I would have to say like things that I've taken with me is like time management and just being really good and really intentional about like my admin work. Great. Yeah. So I clearly did not learn the same time management skills. Um, so kudos, <laughs> kudos on that one. In terms of uh, things that uh, I think I took away from the experience of being in student leadership, um, you know, how to speak in public. It's something that you have to do if you're a club president, right? You have to be able to give a presentation to a group of colleagues. You have to be able to give a welcoming speech at your graduation address or whatever it might be, right? You have to get comfortable being in that space. And I think that's something that being in student leadership uh, really did for me. I also think there are some of the practical skills around, you know, how to uh, take a relevant survey of those that you're in classes with, you know, what are those 
uh, things that we feel like we would like to learn and how do I get meaningful insights and opinions from people to be able to help provide that. And that's something that I ended up using a lot in my role as a training manager, which is what I did before becoming an HR manager. So I think there's a lot of practical skill sets that uh, one gets from being in student leadership. Thank you. Hi. And we're going to now welcome Jacob Villanueva to the panel. This, this is a progressive panel, folks. We're going we're gonna just, it's just going to get better and better as we go. So I'm going to back up and give you um, the opportunity to introduce yourself, Jacob, your major while you were here at SJSU and your current role and company. Hi, yeah. Sorry I'm late. So uh, my name is Jacob. I am a 2021 graduate in mechanical engineering for BS here at San Jose State. Currently, I'm a manufacturing engineer at a startup called Vimon. Uh, we do tech and we try to automate warehouses. Um, yeah. All right. Short. All right. <laughs> so before I move on to the next question, I'm going to let you catch up a little bit. All right. So while you were um, here at San Jose State, what made you choose mechanical engineering? And were there any on-campus resources or clubs that helped you succeed, especially since you're a 21 grad, so you grad graduated right in the middle of the pandemic? Yeah. So when I was in high school, I kind of knew already I wanted to be in something that was hands-on. I wasn't sure if that was engineering or if that was just tech in general. Uh, I kind of looked at a lot of different majors. I looked at construction management, um, anything like as being a contractor or being mechanic and it wasn't until I went to the uh, open house event that they had for students that were accepted to San Jose State and I went into the engineering department and I talked to a lot of professors I got to see some of the labs open labs where I got to um, ask them about their research projects and really talking to a lot of the older students because most of the uh, seniors or uh, grad students that were in the professor's labs that were showcasing these were very knowledgeable about their field and also you know what they wanted to do in their career and also how the classes were relevant to what they were learning with the professor and being able to get that experience from other people who kind of were already applying their degree to some sort of project or or you know like a job right because basically if you work as a researcher there's different opportunities that you can have to get paid for that or some type of compensation um, depending where you are so having that opportunity early on and being able to imagine myself as maybe I could be this type of student or you know this is where I can take my my goals as a first year and kind of imagining that all the way as a you know a fourth year student or a fifth year student or a grad student that, that was really helpful into me picking my major as a mechanical engineering student. Great. Yeah. I'm going to let you answer one more question, and then we'll go back into rotation. I know that you are a College of Engineering ambassador. Yeah. Um, so the next question is kind of related to that. You know, what, what skills did you build in various leadership roles? You may have had others. That's just the one I know about, um, either formally or informally. And how have you brought that into your professional role? Can you repeat the first part of the question? Sure. Yeah. What skills did you build in leadership roles that you may have had while you were here on campus? Mm -hmm. And then how did you bring those skills into your professional role? Oh, definitely. So uh, as she mentioned before, when I was a uh, first year, I was exposed to a club here or organization on campus called the Engineering Ambassador Program. They're actually the ones who organize a lot of the tours and a lot of the outreach for the College of Engineering. The Engineering Ambassador Program caters to mostly K through 12 students, but let's say there's a, a tour or open house in the College of Engineering, they'll bring in volunteers and they'll talk and share their experiences <laughs> with uh, potential candidates that are gonna come into the, the engineering programs. And that's that was my first, exposure to using uh, communication as a platform to you know talk about technology and talk about engineering because at, at least for me so a big part of what I do and what drives me in work is being able to share my experiences with other people. I think for me it's more than just the passion about engineering so one big thing I learned out of that leadership program was communication and 
a big part of the program was going out and we had to make PowerPoint presentations on you know, some topic. So uh, there was a project we did called uh, Catapults and we have to teach these physics concepts and create a project and give basically a how-to instruction for kinder to fifth grade on this is how you make a catapult and this is why it works. And that translates to what I do now as a manufacturing engineer where I have to get on the production line and I teach technicians, you know, this is the new product that we're going to launch and this is how you do that. And I think as a manufacturing engineer, these skills for communication and how you translate, this is what uh, the product is and this is how you design something is, is very important. Yeah. Thank you, Jacob. All right, we're going to let the rest of the panelists come back in. So we'll give you a little bit of a break. We'll circle back around. So the next question for all of the panelists, and we'll start with Kat, if that's okay with you, is what does leadership mean to you? And what have you done in your career to demonstrate leadership? All the easy questions. This morning. Thanks. I feel like I'm <laughs> in an interview right now. Uh, you know, to me, leadership is really about, you know, living and modeling my personal brand and my strengths in my words and my actions and also balancing that with being in tune enough with you know what others need from me to be effective in positively influencing them and just you know how do I lean on those strengths that are going to best serve me in trying to you know make that change happen right so because um, I have to be aware of the fact that others are living their personal brands and their strengths and their values, which might not always be perfectly in line with mine, right? So uh, one thing I wish that somebody had told me when I was in a position you're all in right now is that it doesn't really matter if you're the smartest, most innovative, hardest working, whatever person in the room, right? You're going to have to work with other people to be able to get projects over the goal line. And you're going to need to be able to positively influence and have that, that effect with others. So I think just really, you know, being able to orient to what my true north is and what my strengths are and, and never sacrifice those, but also being aware enough of which ones to, to lean into in a given situation to be as effective as possible. And the people in the group, in the space with the team that I'm working with is something that's, you know, continuing. It's a work in progress, right? But it's something that I, I feel I started to learn being in leadership capacities here and started to learn working with others, particularly in those group assignments, which I know we all love so well but it's something that's really going to, to serve you over the course of your career. And it's something that I find myself using on a, a regular basis while trying to implement process improvements in my work. Uh, you know, you definitely will work with people who have a particular way in which they like to do things, or maybe are not trying to change the way in which things are done, but figuring out, you know, how am I going to be as effective as I can be in this interpersonal interaction? How am I going to be able to, seek common ground and work with other people is I think where uh, leadership skills have shined through in my career. Clarissa May. Um, I think leadership is, I think it's something that's like, it's, I don't think it has like one set definition. I think it, it could be the little things, but also the things that like people don't really see like right in front of them. Um, one of the things that I, I've enjoyed like in my in my role in the office I work in is we're constantly being told to lean in the, into our leadership and for me like I, I I'm not always the most confident person right like I'm always like you know we all have our self doubts and like I'm I'm no different but I think at the end of the day when I go to bed at night and I'm like yeah I did that I feel I feel safe and secure in the decisions that I've made or the things that I've said, I think that's leadership in itself, but also like going back to the team that I work with, um, it's seeing them shine in their own way and and being able to like hype each other up um, just because like, I know I, it could be scary to lead. And so I know for me, like for me personally, like I, I still get scared to lead. I still get scared to like be like presenting and like being in front of people. And I think it's like being able to like get out of your comfort zone and, and to do the things that scare you and like get, get over that bump. I think that's leadership, so yeah. Thank you. 
Jacob, did you have something that you wanted to add to this one? Can you repeat the question? Of course. <laughs> you don't remember it from five minutes ago? Sure. What does leadership mean to you? And what have you done in your career to demonstrate leadership? You know, I, so uh, I, I did mention before I work for a startup and I think when it comes to working in a startup, the culture is kind of everybody has to be a leader. I work in a really small company. My office has maybe about 35 people in it. I am um, versus a larger, much larger engineering company where there could be tons of manufacturing engineers and lots of designers. I am the sole manufacturing engineer at this company, which means I take on a lot of different responsibility. Um, coming into this company, I didn't know that. Uh, I also wasn't familiar with, um, you know, startup culture. I had an idea of what it was like, but as uh, someone who came from a bigger company and kind of going into a smaller one, I it was a little bit of a culture shock. So seeing that uh, part of leadership meant, you know, holding yourself accountable and being responsible for your own actions was, was uh, something that was really big for me. And seeing that everything I did and everything I thought about, like the processes, like how I went about work, you like as a leader, you kind of have to uh, recognize the things you do and you have to recognize like other people and how they're gonna do their work. Because I, I think there was a good point that was made before that, you know, uh, at the end of the day, like I think a big part of leadership is being able to work with other people. It's not about being the smartest person in the room, but it's about, you know, how do you incorporate everybody else's perspective so that you know we can get this done correctly as a group? Because most projects out there, they're not going to be done by one single person. You're going to need the help of other people. And that's really the core of our organization is being able to work together as a team and everybody doing their part. But that only works when everybody holds themselves accountable for um, their own work. So for me, leadership really is your ability to, to recognize how to work with other people, being able to recognize their weaknesses, their strengths, how you recognize your own weaknesses and strengths, and being able to apply that and improve from that um, in your work. Excellent. Yeah, very good point. Our, our world today is way too complex for everybody to know everything. So you got to know who you can work with and bring in for the other pieces, you know, know what you're good at and know what other people are good at so that you can assemble that team, which actually leads very nicely into my next question, which I'm gonna start with Clarissa May. What are the best ways for students to network in your field? You know, are there specific professional associations, meetups, conferences? What are the, what are the big ways to, to find out more? I think um, as a child and adolescent development major, being, being connected with your professors is one thing, but also like connecting with your advisors, connecting with the success centers are so important just because I know like we had to do that off, off site work with the elementary schools. And so they were that bridge to getting us into the classrooms, into the, um, into like finding us master teachers to learn from. Um, and I still like, I, I've, I still keep in touch like from time to time with other people in my major. And it's it's really nice to see them, you know, give back to the community as as educators. Um, I think you all, I think everyone here knows um, teachers, there's there's a big teacher shortage. And so seeing like my friends still stay in as educators and teachers is something that um, I think it's, it's really admirable. Um, and the work that I do now in student involvement, you know, networking, I would say networking and saying that like I did go to school here like has helped me, um, but also just being able to know other people from other institutions and seeing what they're doing. Um, if if there's trends that we're not we're noticing at our institution, I know like I've I've reached out to other people in similar positions as me and I've asked them like what are you doing in terms of this issue and so um, yeah just just trying to find your people is so important um, especially like trying to like figure out how to problem solve and streamline things has is, is definitely been helpful um, with networking too. Like, yeah, there's professional organizations, but also people that you you went to school with, right? Like, I know everyone dreads group projects, but I look back and I'm like, man, I wish I still kept in touch with the people like I did group projects with wondering like how they're doing, but also like, how are they like solving the problems that, um, you know, like I'm facing in my role, so. Pat. 
Yeah. So honestly, if you want to really, uh, you know, immerse yourself in the world of local government, the best way to do so is by getting an internship with a local government. You know, I'm of course going to say San Jose or Santa Clara County or one of the larger organizations around here, I think is where you're going to get exposed to just the, you know, the plethora of things that local governments work on. Um, I would also say that, uh, you know, specific to public sector, ICMA puts out some great resources on leadership as well as kind of trends in public administration. Uh, they do a lot of really good conferences, IPMA HR, and then there's another organization called SHRM, which I think is SHRM. Uh, but if you're really looking to go in the direction of uh, public sector HR, those would be the organizations I would recommend. You know, subscribe to their newsletter, go to a couple of conferences again, but really get an internship in local government if this is the career track for you. Jacob. Hi. On the topic of networking, I, I think there's a really good point that was made about, you know, the the just the people that you you went to school with and the people that you meet. And I think that goes for anything. There's a lot of potential networking, or there's a lot of people that could potentially be in your life, just the people around you. Um, anywhere you go, that's why I think it's it's really important to go around and just be kind to people because you never know who you're gonna meet next out in the world or you know in your next job, in your future job. So in terms of that, it's really important not to burn bridges like that. Also, you know, kind of just uh, being kind to people in that way. Um, for maybe more relevant information about networking, I think, yeah, you can go to, especially in engineering, it's really good to go to your professors. I've had um, lots of professors have, maybe they don't have, jobs that they can offer, but you don't know that they're really well connected in industry and they have friends and colleagues and professionals who do know people in industry. Uh, for example, one of my uh, elective professors, he, at the end of the semester, he talks to some of the students that he really likes or that had um, really good grades or had really good projects. And he'll tell them, you know, uh, these are opportunities that I've seen and that some of my friends have reached out to me and he kind of offers them to a majority of the students out in the class. And I think like that's a really good example of somebody who's making it easy for you to network with them, but it doesn't mean that there's no part on you that you have to go out and you have to reach out as well. And when I was a third year or a fourth year, I was looking for a part-time job and I reached out to one professor who said he was looking for a TA for his class, uh, ME120, which is a experimental methods class. And he just needed somebody who could be there for an hour and teach like one or two sections. And to me, I was just treating it as I needed work. I needed some money to, to pay for school and for other expenses. But at the end of it, he was like, you know, if you need a recommendation or anything, like, let me know. And he ended up being my recommendation for my first job out of school. So you can really look about like around all the people who you interact with as potential networking. Um, I think LinkedIn is another good source. If you're not talking about within the school, uh, you can, LinkedIn is perfect for searching up people that you don't even know yet. Uh, but there's, some connection, right? They say you have one mutual connection, 15 mutual connections, and maybe you had one class with this person. So um, kind of blind and anonymously connecting with people also works as well. But it's really important to make that first step yourself. And I think a big part of networking is also, it's about relationships. And it's also about uh, learning that not everybody who you reach out to is going to want to connect. So maybe by trying to network, you're also going to realize there's going to be a lot of rejection, but that also goes the same for job offers. And networking is kind of like you're putting yourself on a plate and you're kind of telling yourself, telling other people that, you know, this is who I am and like, do you want to connect? And even potentially after that, networking within peers, but also networking for another mentor and kind of working towards, you know, this is my experience. I hope that this is things that you can offer me because I see that you do this, this, and this in work, and this is where I want to be. 
and being really open and honest with potential people that you want to network is really important. It could be uh, your coworker at your part-time job. It could be your coworker in a full-time job. You could already be in your career and you can still network. Um, I think just being here at this event is a great opportunity to network. There's lots of events that go on campus every week, every month throughout the year. There's uh, different organizations that hold their own networking sessions. So especially in the College of Engineering, there's ASME, that's American Society of Mechanical Engineers. There's um, the honor societies like Tau Beta Pi. You could join a volunteer group like Engineering Ambassador Program. And maybe it's not the career goals that you have in common, but it's that organization that you have in common. And that's kind of where networking comes in place is trying to find something in common, whether it's something that somebody can help you with that they have an idea about, or whether it's as strong as we come from the same background and you know I think that you can help me with this, or maybe we can just network and stay in touch, something like that. Yeah. So if you build it, they will come. As I told you, this is the progressive alumni panel. And now we have our fourth member. Obviously, we're talking about networking right now, but I'm going to back up and allow you to introduce yourself, David. Of course. Thank you. And I, I think this mic is on, right? It's, it should be. Thank you. Yeah, 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 I got to lean in. Uh, so David Zapetta, Business Marketing 2015. Apologize for being late, but I think on the topic of networking, um, my first job out of San Jose State, I went to the Career Center when I was a third year or a second year. I can't, re I, I can't remember. And I actually networked around and told them I'm graduating in two years, but I'm interested in these companies that came to the Career Center. And then I took all their business cards and I emailed every one of them the minute I graduated or four months before and let them know I'm graduating the state I'd like to interview at your company. And uh, it was uh, very awkward. And it was very, uh, you know, hey, I hope you remember remember me from two years ago, but um, it worked out. And I ended up getting a job at a startup in Emeryville that eventually uh, Adobe acquired, which is where I'm at now. So um, if you put yourself out there, if you believe that people want to invest in you, and I think you said this, right? It, it, so, some, some people won't. Some people will, um, you know not put the, uh, what's the word, the the olive branch out for you. But if you put yourself out there and if you go in with good intent, um, you know, there are people out there that would want to help you. And I think that was my firsthand example of uh, how that worked out for me. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So obviously on the networking topic, Jacob mentioned LinkedIn, but both Jacob and David are here today because I reached out to them through SJSU Squared, which is what I call the SJSU LinkedIn. So if you're not aware of this program, it's a platform that the Career Center and the Alumni Association co-run, um, and it is populated by alumni and industry professionals who have volunteered to be there to answer our students' career questions. So you can search by major, you can search by industry expertise, you can search by a company name, and most likely there's gonna be somebody that pops up. Um, and anyone that you see on that platform you can reach out to. We have um, message templates that you can use, or you can use your own um, words. Um, but if you can see them, you can reach out to them because they can each individually set their own touch points. So if they get busy, they can they can shut their mentorship off. But you know, LinkedIn. There's almost 300,000 alumni on LinkedIn, so absolutely a wonderful resource. But SJSU Squared is a nice, safe space, um, and it's and it's filled with people who have already said, yes, I, I want to do this. I want to help you. So um, check it out. So, All right. Next question. What strategies did you use in your college years to plan out how to build career experience? Did you set goals or timelines? And if not, what do you wish you had done? How would you advise the current students? I'm going to start with Jacob on this one and work the way work my way down. I, I think for engineering, building a career experience is really important for that first job. It's not exactly necessary. There's always people who are willing to take a chance on you, but it does help to have experience built up and to also have a plan. I think. Part of this comes from being able to plan effectively, but not everything always works out the way that you want it to. 
So uh, a lot of what I did when I was in college, at least the first year I planned to get into construction and be in HVAC. So a lot of what I did was talk to, actually my, my first year, I ended up talking to the professor. I reached out to the professor for the HVAC mechanical engineering course, which you can only take uh, once you meet the requirements. So probably I wouldn't have been able to take it until my fourth year. And the reason why I did this is because I didn't want to spend the next four years uh, going through my degree to realize that the one class that I wanted to take and the one thing I wanted to do with my career is not something I wanted to do. And I think the best way to understand and before you can start making career goals is uh, you you need to have like some base understanding of what it means to be in, in that stage. And the best way to get this is from people who are already there. So reaching out to my professor who he already had 15 years of experience in this area, I thought that was the best. And that was the only thing that came to my mind. It's the easiest thing you can do is a lot of the professors, especially at the College of Engineering, have their own industry experience and being able to reach out to them like, what is it like to work in this? Like, I know you're a professor now, but what was it like to work in industry doing this? And being able to get their perspective is really important to set career goals because you get to see, especially as you talk to more people, you'll get to kind of be able to lay out and see, okay, these are the different things that people have done in their careers and these are their paths. And you kind of, whether you get to see their successes or you get to see their potholes, kind of, you know, how do you want to build your own career? It kind of starts with, okay, how do people build their careers in general? And from talking to, to that professor, I got to understand like, oh, this is, this is what he did. He started with an, some internships um, in this area. And then eventually he went from one contractor to the next, to the next, and then he built his own company. And being able to talk to other people, I think that that's, that's really the core of it. After that, then you have to start finding resources. So once you know, okay, this is, this is what I want in my career and you've talked to enough people, then you, you start finding, okay, where, where can I find resources related to that? So at the end of, you know, I just set up one meeting with this professor and I was like, okay, thank you, thank you for sharing. And to me, that was really helpful. And I asked him, you know, how can I be in this career? And how, what is the next step for me if I want to pursue this as a career? And he told me, well, you can, you, you don't have to just join the student organization here. He said, why don't you come ahead and join the professional organization? So a lot of things that people don't know is some professional organizations, actually, you can have free student membership and you can join those and you can talk with other professionals, whether you're a student or already have a full-time career. And I think while it is nice to interact with your peers and to be able to talk to them about how they're getting jobs and, you know, they'll host conferences like this within um, the school and the safety of the organization, you can also reach out to the professional organizations that are out there and talk to professionals directly. So uh, the organization I joined was ASHRAE, which is the American Society of like Heating, uh, Refrigeration, and for the first time I showed up there, it was very awkward. I was the only student there. There were some seniors there, but they were seniors who they already had internships with these companies and they were just getting rid of that transition from student to full-time work with these companies. And it's a really good opportunity to talk with these people like, oh, what do you do for work? And you never know. Sometimes you just ask them for your biz their business card or they'll even go up to you. It's like, are you looking for work? Are you looking for an internship? Because you've already kind of put yourself out there and you've put yourself in an environment and a situation that makes it easy for people to reach out to you. These companies now did not have to wait for me to go up to their booth at a career center. I was already going to these companies at their organization where they meet once a month. And when you think about being able to understand your career goals, I, I, I think that's, that's where it starts. It's, it's learning from other people and how they've developed their careers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you need me to repeat the question? Yes, please. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what strategies did you use in your college years to plan out how to build career experience? Did you set goals or timelines? And if not, 
what would you advise current students to do differently? So I would say that, uh, you know, based on when I graduated, I finished my undergraduate in 09, which was the height of the Great Recession. There was a lot of uncertainty at that exact moment. And part of the reason I went directly into graduate school was feeling like, wow, this is not the economy I thought I signed up for. So I think that that experience just taught me that um, what was going to better serve me was having a, a general direction that I was heading in but maybe not having one specific end point in mind, um, just because the, the situation, you know, the global economy was so volatile at that point. And I think that, you know, those of us who are, you know, at this point in our lives are going, wow, we've already lived through a lot of different economic, you know, crises in the last 20 years, a lot of once in a lifetime ones, right? <laughs> uh, so I think that just having that, that flexibility of, you know, not having one exact end point in mind has really been helpful to me and just saying, this is the direction I'm going in. I'm going to provide local government service. I'm going to build better systems of administration. I'm going to help people. As long as I'm getting to do those things, then I'm going to be pretty content in what I'm doing in my work. And so, uh, you know, in terms of a specific goal I set as a graduate student here, it was I want to set myself up for a full-time job that's going to enable me to do those things. And so how am I going to gain the collection of intern and volunteer experiences, the you know, training in the classroom, and you know, to your point about the networking, the connections, how I'm going to get myself on the radar of the people who are going to be those hiring managers, so that when I do graduate or I'm getting close to graduation, how am I going to put myself in a position to attain that full-time job that I'm going to actually feel good about spending 40 plus hours per week doing? So I think that was the, the majority of my, my planning, if you will, just saying, I'm going in this direction. I have this interim goal of you know achieving a full-time position in that direction. But I think also what has served me is just that, that openness and that flexibility to knowing that there isn't a whole lot of certainty in terms of what uh, the world holds for all of us. And just as long as I get to keep moving in this direction, I'm going to be pretty content with that. David. Um, I agree with everything you just said. I think uh, setting a direction, setting a point that you want to work towards, whether it's next year, two years, three years, it's, it's baseline foundation of what you should be doing. Um, the other thing is, at least from strategy in college, was uh, I, I tried to make it a point to put myself in uncomfortable situations where um, I didn't really know if I was capable of doing it. So kind of challenging yourself. And I feel like if it's raising your hand in a class, if it's signing up for an elective that you may not have uh, too much experience in taking leadership in um, a group project, those kind of things, I think really box you into a category that employers or companies are looking for. Can this person uh, step out of his boundaries or step out of his comfort zone and, and, and produce or uh, lead a team that we may be trying to start up? So I think uh, that was the strategy that I was going for in, in, in college. And uh, it says business marketing on uh, my name, but I, I came in as an engineering, engineering major. I moved into environmental science. Then I did po political science. And my thought process there was I want to be an engineer. I want to save the environment. I want to make laws that save the environment. And then I went to business management and then sub-law marketing and said, I, this, this can cover all the things I want to do. So uh, I had some experience switching around majors and uh, switching around classrooms and professors. So I think um, in terms of strategy as a student, just um, put yourself in situations where you can uh, take the spotlight or you can um, be someone that bubbles up and professors or employers or people recognize. So uh, if it feels awkward, it's probably good because you're putting yourself in a place where that you can excel and people are looking for that. Thank you. So you just mentioned that you did environmental science. You missed the part where I said I'm the HR manager for the environmental services department. If you could have your people call my people after this, that would be great. I, I will 100% do that. <laughs> Networking right here on the stage, folks. First of May. Um, I was someone as a student, I, I needed to know what was next. Um, so I, I remember fall semester, like I was, I do my classes and stuff, but I knew that by summer I was going to be doing X, Y, Z. And I remember, I think my second year as a student here, I didn't know what was, what I was in my fall semester, but I didn't know what summer was going to look like because I kind of had already, um, used my resources and, I hate no, not knowing what's not what's next. Like I need to know. And um, 
I remember like I have I have really good people in in my corner and you know they were like yeah like sign up for this internship program and um for me I I remember at the, at the time I was split between do I want to be an elementary school teacher and I wanted to either go like somewhere between preschool to first grade or do I want to do this student affairs route that I'm not really familiar with and um I think what what kind of came down to it, and it sounds silly now when I look back, is was did I want to take the GRE or did I want to take the the C best for teachers, which is the California Basic um, Education Skills Test? And I think for me, like I knew the the C best was so specific, and it it didn't it couldn't really like go far with it. Whereas like I knew if I take the GRE. If I wanted to go to grad school for higher ed, which I ended up doing, I knew that I could always like jump into other things if if higher ed didn't work. Like I knew like, well, some programs require a GRE score if you want to do like an MBA program or or like other grad programs. So I knew like the GRE, I don't want to say it was safe, but I knew like if if I felt like I wanted to grow, that I could go that way. And so um as a student. I think what helped was that as a as a child and adolescent development major, you were kind of like on strict, I don't want to say you were on a strict timeline, but you were always taught to plan ahead just because like you weren't just planning for yourself and you weren't just planning to graduate, but some of the classes we were taking, it was creating lesson plans from like the bottom up. And it wasn't just like, oh, like this is the unit. It was, okay, so this day you're going to be doing this with the students. Another day you're going to be examining this skill set and on the third day you're going to be assessing everything overall and so I think being able to take that and apply it to myself and what my goals were and what I needed to do to get to where I wanted to be in essence kind of helped me to where I am now. So if there's nothing that we've learned over the last couple of years flexibility is definitely one of them and it's definitely a good idea to apply flexibility to your career plans because what you know as Jacob mentioned even at the very beginning of that question he wanted to see if his end goal was going to be something that he enjoyed so he you know planned ahead yes yes I know <laughs> I know <laughs> so um we're going to open it up for a couple of quick questions. If we maybe have any questions online or in the in the room before we switch out to our employer panel. So no questions online. Any questions in the room for our panelists? Just absorbing all that knowledge. Yes. Let's see, let me get you a microphone, Judy. Hi, well, my name is Ram. Uh, I'm doing my software engineering uh, grad here. Uh, my question to David is, uh, how's your typical day as a solutions consultant at Adobe looks like? Uh, do you talk a lot, like participate in meetings? Uh, how, how does it work? Thanks. Yeah, I think, um, and for context, solution consultant translates to uh, sales engineer, pre-sales uh, engineer, whatever, you know, they're all interchangeable. So uh, in terms of, in, in my role is, uh, I consider myself kind of a consultant of clients. So um, if a client has a question on um, their website's analytics or uh, offline data or uh, how they can kind of make sense of all this data coming in, uh, I work with the sales group to kind of dissect the problem and present a solution and consult them on the solution. So solution consultant and the sales team helps things I engineer sales. So they make money. But uh, my day to day is uh, I have a few um, uh, accounts, about 10 of them or clients that I work with. And in terms of coding and development, I don't do a lot because I think you're a computer science major. I, I, uh, there is some involved uh, enough to understand or develop an environment or a sandbox for a client. But for the most part, you're uh, you're more uh, client facing, working with the sales group, um, kind of the middleman. And the joke is like, you're just making sure sales is not lying to the client. <laughs> like, can, can it actually do this? And they'll say yes. And then you're like, well, you know, let's look at the <laughs> look, let's go the data and let's, let's look at the the environment and see if we can do it. So uh, I don't know if it's a day to day question, but um, it's uh, you work with a, 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 a couple of accounts. 
a sales leader and uh, some other uh, consultants to kind of develop a solution for the clients and make sure that they can um, have the best customer experience. And I think for context too, Adobe is known for Photoshop and the creative suite. Um, I work in the digital experience side and we also have a document side. So uh, Acrobat, think Acrobat, think analytics, which is what I'm in and then think Photoshop as a third group, but I'm in the middle side. So you'll be working with a lot of data uh, and not lying to clients. So. <laughs> Always a lofty goal. <laughs> well, thank you all. Um, David and Clarissa May will also be here for our networking hour. So if you have additional questions for them and wanted to talk to, to them more about their experience, they will be here for that. But we're going to take a quick break before we transition into the employer panel. So just a round of applause for all of our panelists.